Welcome to Author Author. Today I have Tiffany Vakillian, president of the San Diego Book Awards. Today she'll be talking about how she became president, also what she does uh, on the side for a living, and she'll be talking about her impression of narrators of audiobooks. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and here we go. Do you have a, a social media background? Did you... Um did you, other than just being the youngest person at the board, <laughs> the I mean, did you, did you say, hey, you know, I can do this, this, this because I had this experience or? That's basically what happened. I went there with my copy of my books and just listening to the people speaking, I just knew I had something to give to the San Diego Book Awards that was more important than what I could get from submitting my books. So I opted to join the board because I started freelancing in 2009 and I started helping out this marketing firm doing market research, submitting calls, uh, cold calls, um, writing up press releases, editing press releases, and then I started working for a Word With You Press. Actually, I didn't even start working for them. I started attending the Anti-Social Writers and Creative Misfits when it was in Oceanside before it shut down. And I met Thornton Sully. That was May or June of 2013. By the end of the year, I was working for him. I was putting out newsletters and working on the website when his son couldn't and different things like that. And now I'm a contributing editor. These things that just, they build upon one another. While I do social media, when I was in uh, graduate school, I told people I get paid to play on Facebook. And that was in 2010. And no one had really started thinking about it. At least, you know, like the laymen weren't really thinking boosting posts and things like that. And then Facebook figured it out <laughs> and really started, you know, that machine rolling. And I love what I do, but it's not just social media. It's not just editing. I call myself a virtual assistant because it depends on what my client's needs are. Sometimes I'm formatting the book. Sometimes I'm uploading it to Create Space. Sometimes I'm uploading it to KDP. Sometimes I'm just editing the ebook to make sure that the links work, that the images are the right size and shape, that they flow correctly. There's so many different things that I do, but it's all under this beautiful hat of publishing. And I'm, I'm very happy because it means I get to play with books all day in various forms at various stages. I do marketing. I don't like marketing just because I'm more of the artistic that's why I appreciate editing so much because it's mechanical, but it's mechanics of art. It's not mechanics of sales, you see? Mm -hmm. So I, yes, I can help with the social media. Yes, I do help with marketing. I put on daily deal sales where I'm purchasing sales packages and blog tours and different things like that. Yes, I can do that. But what I prefer personally is mostly editing because it's basically reading the book, talking smack with the author through their story premise. I love beta reading. Matter of fact, I'm beta reading right now on top of editing and on top of, on top of, on top of. Do you charge for beta reading? Nope. Probably have to be selective though, because at some I'm point, very... especially after this video, you might get a lot of people saying, hey, can you beta read for me? <laughs> yeah, can you beta read for me? Yeah, because I give basically, and you can ask people I've beta read for, um, I give basically the same level of work as I would a paid client because I love the story so much. I actually have one guy. I was in the hospital um, on bed rest again. Hi, Grace. <laughs> I was bored out of my mind and he sends me his book because, you know, the angels tell him, God tells him, please send her this book. She's going out of her mind with boredom. And he did it because I beta read his first edition. And there was this one part where I was like, no, I call BS. He's like, thank you so much for calling BS on my story. He's already winning awards. So I wasn't his editor. I was just a beta reader. But he thanks me repeatedly for my part in his process. He thanks all of his beta readers, just like I thank all of my beta readers. Did a lot of this business sort of churn up because of the uh, anti-social... I just I just forgot the Any name. Any social writers and creative misfits? Yes. That was a meetup group. That was the brainchild of Thorne Sully, who is the editor in chief of A Word with You Press, which is where my book is published from. Thank you for publishing my book. <laughs> um, and they're still in business, right? I mean, they're still publishing. They're still A Word with You Press hold contests so that writers can submit their work and get critiqued by other authors on the website. If it weren't for those contests that I submitted my work to. I wouldn't have written or published my first book of poetry. I never would have even considered myself worthy. So Word With You Press, um, when they were actually 
publishing books, and it was an imprint, they were actually still had these contests. Mm -hmm. But now they're still offering, they're offering contests, but they're actually not publishing work for anybody. They're so offering the contests, and I believe what's going forward is publishing from the contests, as opposed to being a publishing house for outside work. How did you start, you know, networking all of this? I mean, just <laughs> wow. It started with Thorn, Thornton. It started with uh, the the writers group, and then kind of filtered off into these others, other writers groups, and. Um, then life happened and I had to step back, but I still love to write and I still wanted to submit, which is, um, that's how you know, there's, that's how I know I'm a writer. I can't not write, it's ridiculous. I'm a poet, I can't not write poetry. And if you go to my website, yes, I freelance, but majority of my website, it, it's my poetry because I have to get it out. And I'm happy to do all of the other work, but I'm an artist. First. So I call myself an entrepreneur or an entrepreneurist because I love making money doing what I do. It's my form of right livelihood. It's ethical, it makes me feel good, and it does good to the world. But what I'm mostly interested in is in sharing the beauty that art gives us, you know, and that's why I love San Diego Book Awards because I would not know about even a tenth of the stories that I've read if it weren't for the San Diego Book Awards, making these books available to me, first as a judge, then a judging chair, as a board member, now as president. I'm still involved in the judging process. I want to be. My name doesn't get any more weight just because it has president on it now. I'm still happy to read. I'm still happy to give critique. I'm still happy to do those things. Are there any books in the past that you've been judging that you've you know really loved that kind of stand out? As far as San Diego Book Awards goes, I... I really, really appreciated YA. They were good to me. <laughs> Science fiction, fantasy, YA. One book co that comes to mind, The Improbable Rise of Paco Jones. I loved this book. It was so adorable. It spoke to me on a lot of levels. They ended up winning and I was really, really glad. In the case of another book, which I won't name, I loved it. I thought it was great. It was suspenseful. It creeped me out in all the right places and things like that. But the other two judges didn't particularly care for it. So I basically had to eat a little bit of crow and say, I guess you didn't do that well. That's interesting because now we're back to the, you the, know, the, the two judges say 90s and then someone else says 40. In well, this case, I'm not going to say what the scores were, right. but obviously yours was higher and theirs were lower. Mm -hmm. So how do you have that conversation? And then what, what did they tell you that you said, oh, okay, fine. No. I, I missed that because I loved it. Well, or like what, basically, or yeah. I, I overlooked it because I loved it. I mean, what's... No, um, I'll call it the situation with the secret sauce because again, I love reading and so it, it leaves me open to a lot of different things. These people that judged were looking at things that I was willing to overlook for the story. Character building, they weren't, they weren't too thrilled about the character building. I thought it was sufficient to give them 90th percentile. These other two gave them and it wasn't, I want to say it wasn't a 90-40 situation. It was like 90-85-82. But 90-85-82 out of 100 skews low. The winner had 96. In that same instance, if it had been the same three judges in one of the books that had final, mm -hmm. our scores would have been very similar, higher. I believe in my judges. I trust their scoring. What do you love to read? <laughs> on your own time, when you have time, because it sounds have, like you don't really have time. But I have a nine-month-old, and she's crawling and teething. <laughs> I believe in audiobooks. I'm doing some sci-fi fantasy, some business. Well, I'm also an editor, and to that end, I've done poetry, spiritual, you know, inspirational, memoir. Yeah, kind of all over the place as far as books. But it's because I love reading. I absolutely adore the written word. I prefer books to digital. But I prefer audiobooks to paperback because I appreciate the oral history that some people seem to, they get lost in the smell of the book, which I totally understand. But before we were written, we were told. Well, actually, I'm kind of curious. There's a lot of audiobooks out there. You've probably listened to a bunch of them. Are there good and bad audiobooks? And just as far as delivery. Oh, 
I mean, as course. far as like, you know, the voice. I mean, you're like going, oh my God, I can't believe this person's reading this thing. Or Yes, yeah. I know. I actually, I pay attention to the um, to the readers' names. I'm not going to endorse or not endorse any of them now because it will get me in trouble. <laughs> but I, I'll just put it this way. I have heard, <laughs> talking to some people, yes. that um, a lot of people say authors... Not all authors, but on the whole, authors really shouldn't be reading their own books because they may not be as good. Do you feel that way or not? Hmm. Well, here's where I have to kind of step, step back and say, I'm a character. I don't have a problem being a character. I don't have a problem being a character within a character. So for me to read my own book, I don't have a problem with it. Some people aren't as animated as I am. And to them, I would say, if you can't take direction, Maybe you should pay someone else to read. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. Nice and safe. Yeah. That sounds like a yes to me. Yeah. Anyway. Um... <laughs> Please subscribe so my dad can make more videos like this. Thank you.